Good morning, my friends, and welcome to day five of our 50-day journey, uh, prayer journey all leading us all the way up to the day of Pentecost. Uh, I'm so excited to see what the Lord has uh, planned for us. Um, I'm expecting to see something uh, happen, you know, either during those days or as we lead into Pentecost. Um, not just in my life, um, but in also in yours, and prayfully in the church um, together as a, as our body, you know. So, um, to, what I want to pray on today, I want to I want to read some verses. Um, I had something planned and prepared, but um, the Lord changed it on my mind. This changed it this morning. Um, uh, I don't want to make this about myself, but right now I'm going through some um, minor struggles, not physical. I, you could say mostly it's, it's emotional, mental. Um, you know, something happened to me that um, I'm kind of struggling with a little bit now, right now. Um, but I know that the Lord will bring me out of it. Um, so anyway, without getting into detail, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, so the Lord led me to, uh, in regards to my struggle, he led me to um, First Kings. And um, I pray that anything that... Uh, that you're going through, that these verses that I'm going to read and in the prayer that's going to follow will help you um, get through whatever you're going through or uh, keep you out of uh, potential, you know, things. Um, so one thing, I, I'm, let me let me read uh, First Kings. First Kings 19, I'm going to read hopefully only down to verse 12, 13. Um, I know it's more than I, than I plan to read, but um, it's what the Lord's leading me to do. Um, let me read this. And we know in, in 1 Kings, this is when Elijah defeats all the prophets of Baal. So, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had ex executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the go gods to do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Basically, Jezebel's threatened to kill Elijah. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, being Elijah, and went to Beersheba, which belongs to jo Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. And he said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Elijah's uh, obviously, he's distressed, worried about um Jezebel overtaking him and killing him and he's telling the Lord just take my life and then as he lay and slept under a broom tree suddenly an angel touched him and said to him arise and eat an angel an angel of the Lord arise and eat then he looked and there he by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water so he ate and drank and lay down again and the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of the food for 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said, What are you doing, Elijah? Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and hold the Lord. And the Lord, behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? So I encourage you to continue reading the story of Elijah and what happens. But basically what the Lord is telling me and hopefully telling you in these verses is that, um, as I mentioned, I'm going through some uh, some some struggle, um, emotional, um, and it can become spiritual if we're not careful. Because we see right here how Elijah was worried about his troubles, which was Jezebel um, overtaking him and pursuing him and killing him. And he was worried about it, so he was um, concerned. Um, but if you allow your um, potential problems that you're having, whether it be physical, mental, financial, whatever it may be, if you allow them to overtake you, you're going to get to the point where you're going to want to die. So the Lord spoke to me this morning about this. And... Um, 
he said to me, do not allow what you're going through right now to draw you into a season of dryness because we can go into a spiritual season of dryness. And I don't know if any of you experienced it, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure most of you have. Um, I experienced it last year. I want to say last um, August for almost a whole month. And it was, I recorded a video on it. I almost started crying on a video. Um, it's one of the hardest things to go through a season of spiritual dryness, especially if you're really close to the Lord. And, um, but he's always there. His word tells us he's always there. It is us. We allow our struggles, our pains. We allow these situations to, to draw us into a season of dryness. And it's the enemy working on us. You know, he, he's like allowing us to, he's making us concentrate and focus on the problem instead. And we take the our focus away from the Lord. So I pray that if you're going through some struggles, that you always listen for that still, small voice. It's in you. It's in you. And if you continue to read here, that voice gets louder. And the more you seek the Lord, even if you feel he's not there, he's there. Just continue to pray and ask, Lord, let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. So with that, I want to go into prayer. But I want to ask first if we can also lift up the prayer request that I, that I have received. Um, I, my one sister in the Lord who's in Turkey, I want to lift up her, uh, her, um, countrymen and women, um, in Turkey and in Syria for all the earthquake victims, um, and many who are still struggling and struggling very bad now going through it. And, you know, I pray that the Lord will comfort the hearts of those who lost loved ones. I also want to continue praying for, um, Watchman Adam. Okay. He's a brother in the Lord and he has his own YouTube channel. Um, he's going through some current trials and struggles, and I pray that the Lord will, will hold his hand and comfort him and lead him through these, whatever is going on in his life. Um, I'm not going to get into detail what it is, but if you want, you can look up his channel. I think he did a, a video on it. Uh, I want to lift up Ashley A. Okay, she's asking for deliverance from past sins, how the enemy keeps bringing back to remembrance all the things that she did in the past. But I want to remind her that... Um, the Lord, you know, forgets our sins. You know, he, he remembers them the more as the word of God tells us. So she needs to remember that. And also she wants to hear clarity and hearing the Lord's voice. I believe that these verses here in, in, um, in First Kings should help her if she uh, reads it and she sees how the Lord, you can hear this still small voice of the Lord. And then also I want to lift up Shannon T, um, Shannon S. Uh, she asked for prayers for her son to return to the Lord. Her, her son is grown now, and, and he's had a very successful business. He was mightily blessed by the Lord, but uh, the enemy has blinded him. And in his blessings and in his riches, he's, um, you know, forgotten the Lord. And she's praying that he would return to the Lord. So, you know, we're going to pray lift up these prayers, Lord, um, for these people. And also for whatever you have in your heart. If you have anything that you want me to lift up in prayer, um, just write it in the comments and I'll write it down and add it to this list and we'll lift it up every single day. So, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for, for this precious day, Lord, that you have given us, your Lord. Yes, one more day you've given us, Lord, in the land of the living, Lord. So I thank you for the air in our lungs and the blood in our veins, Lord, for what more can we ask for than the, the breath of life that you have breathed into us, Father? We just thank you for the many blessings that you pour upon us, Lord. Just even waking up in the morning is a blessing in itself, Lord. May we not take for granted, Father, the things that you pour upon us, Lord. You open the windows of heaven and rain down your blessings upon us, Lord. And may we always remember this, Lord. May we always give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, I pray that as you lead us out into the world, Lord, that um, you will give us the words of encouragement, the words of comfort, the words of peace, and the words of truth, Lord. Your word is truth, Lord, too, to share with others, Lord. May we be a beacon of light into a dark world, Lord, a world that's lost, Lord, a, a world that's in need of you, Lord Jesus, Lord. There's so many needs, so much so much suffering going on in this world, and but we know that you are the comforter, you are the healer, you are the great provider, Lord Jesus. And I just ask, Lord, just reach down to those who don't know you, Lord, and pull at their heartstrings, Lord, and, and may they come to know you, Lord, before it's too late, Lord. Because we know not how long our life is, Lord. We may take our last breath today, or Lord, if, even if we have 20 years, we do not know when our last day is. So I pray, Lord, that you know they will wake up and they will realize and, and know their need for a Savior. And that only Savior that can help them, that can save them is you, Lord Jesus. So I just lift them all on to you, Lord. And those, those who know you, Lord, and who have drifted away from you, Lord, those who who are called the lukewarm church, the Laodicean church, Lord, I pray that you will draw them back to you, draw them back to their first love, which is you, Lord Jesus. So 
all these needs that are in the world, Lord, I lift them up to you, Lord, and, and my own personal need, Lord. You know them, Lord, even before I know them, Lord. I, I thank you because I know and I've seen you work, Lord. I've seen you work mightily in, in my life and in the life of the many people that I've known and I love, Lord. And I just pray that, you know, you will reach down and, and touch us individually, Lord, at our own personal needs, Lord. And that just comfort us and always remind us, Lord, that as that season of dryness tries to creep in on us, not to let us because you give us the, the early and the latter rain, Lord. So we look forward to that latter rain with you, Lord Jesus. So just come, Lord. Come as we need you in this world so badly, Lord Jesus. It's just, you know, hold our hands as you walk us through this life, Lord. And we ask this in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you, my friends, and I'll see you tomorrow for day six.